My first tutorial showed how you can make parametric spiral shells in Blender, but it used modifiers and drivers. Now it exists as an add-on. I used the add-on to make shells like the ones you're seeing now. Keep watching to see instructions on how to use it. Hello, welcome to the instructional video for my second Blender add-on, the BC Shell add-on version 1.0.0. To begin, you'll need to go to the Edit menu, and then under Preferences, find Add-ons on the left, click the Install button, navigate to the location of the add-on script, bc underscore shell underscore add-on dot pi, download link in the description, click the Install button, and then find the add-on with the Search feature, and enable it by clicking the checkbox. Don't forget to either save preferences or auto save preferences. Let's delete the default cube and the default light. And to pull up the panel for the add-on, we press the N key and we hit the sidebar. And here under Create, we can see a panel called BC Shell. There are a bunch of settings here that have default values, which we'll stick with for the time being and click the Generate button. So you can see that we've generated here at the World Origin the frame for a spiral shell shape. So let's go through some of these parameters. So the first one is the cross-section vertices. So the shell has an inner surface and an outer surface. And by default, these are both circles composed of a certain number of vertices, in this case 32. If we go into Edit Mode, we can see those. So that's a number that you can change. So let's say we drop that down to four, we get a square cross-section shell. Let's bump that back up to something a little more reasonable, maybe 16. The next two settings I'll talk about a little bit further into the process, as they'll be easier to explain at that point. Next, let's look at scale. So scale determines how quickly the shell tapers as it moves upward. So I'm going to make that a bit of a large value here, and that will be easier for you to see what happens when I modify the parameter called coils. So coils is the number of times the shell makes its way around 360 degrees. So if I drop this all the way down to one, we only get a single coil. Two coils, three coils, etc. And then lift determines how far up one coil is from the next. Incidentally, that can be negative if you want the spiral to go in the other direction, in which case it will face downward. So something that you might want to keep in mind with lift is to possibly have a look at your shell from a perspective where you can see whether or not one coil intersects with the next. Personally, I like to have them just sort of touching or nearly touching, but not heavily intersecting. Okay, so suppose that we like these values for the parameters that we've set. Let's go back into edit mode. Another thing that we can modify, say with proportional editing, is this cross-section itself. So we may not want a perfectly circular cross-section. So we can use proportional editing, for example, to modify the shape of that opening. And now that I've done that, I think I may need to tweak the lift parameter again to avoid an intersection. There we go. Okay, so now we've got a cross-section shape that we're happy with and some other settings that we're happy with. The next step will be to click the Wedge Lock button, and that will turn our mesh into a single wedge, or at least the very first wedge of the mesh is editable. So a wedge is a section of the spiral, and it repeats a certain number of times by the time we go around 360 degrees. In this case, this wedge repeats six times as it goes around the spiral. That's what this symmetry wedges parameter is for. And here's why it's important. We can edit the vertices in a wedge, say, for example, by turning this into a protruding spike. We can see that this spike repeats itself six times as it goes around. That's what symmetry wedges does. You can determine what the rotational symmetry is. Now, since you're editing this mesh, you may want a certain amount of geometry available to 
mess around and create some surface features. So that's what cross-section vertices does, first of all, but also detail subwedges. Detail subwedges is how many sections a wedge is divided into. Here you can see this wedge is divided into six sections. That's what that setting is, detail subwedges. Once we've edited the wedge and we're happy with it, we can click the Finish button. And now we have a single mesh. Incidentally, the gap that existed before between the outer and inner surfaces has been sealed shut. That's true of the, uh, of the tiny gap up at the top of the shell as well. And then from here, we can say Shade Smooth. We could add a subdivision surface modifier, for example or do anything that one would do with a mesh in Blender, such as UV unwrapping, texturing, and so on. Just quickly, one thing that I forgot to mention. When you are editing a wedge, it's important that you don't move the vertices that are along the boundaries from one wedge to the next. Those vertices have to line up with the next wedge. However, the add-on will actually fix things if you do modify these vertices. So for example, if I were to grab these, pull them up, you can see I've created a gap. But the moment you get out of edit mode, that's been healed. All those vertices jump back to their default position. Just something to keep in mind. Thank you very much. I hope you find it useful. Again, if you have any suggestions for modifications or changes for future versions of this, please drop me a comment. And if you make anything with this add-on, um, yeah, please also drop me a link. I'd be keen to see it. Thanks a lot, and have a good one.